powerful hug. So what is it about apples that is so interesting? Maybe it's, it's how they sort of represent nutrition. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. Or how uh, it represents gratefulness, appreciation. You give an apple to your teacher on the first day of class. Or maybe it's that old relationship adage, apple in my eye. And I was thinking to myself, what are other ways that the apple has infiltrated our culture? I just kept on reciting apple. Apple, apple, and I couldn't come up with anything at all. <laughs> so I Googled it, and the first thing that came up was apple.com. And uh, by now you know I'm a super out of touch 22 year old who's typing a speech on a Dell. But uh, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about how an apple really changed my life, and maybe not changed my life, but taught me that I had the capability to change my life. It's, it, was, uh, it was an afternoon, my junior year. I was sitting at my, ti at my kitchen table in my tiny West Bank apartment, and I just finished eating the outside sugary portion of the apple, and I was looking at the core. And I was thinking about this core, and I was thinking about all the bad things about it. You know, if you leave it out, it goes brown, or if you, you know, if you, um, it, it must be hard and distasteful, and People throw it away, and, and I, this is basically how I saw every single situation that I encountered. I would always be looking for the negative things about life. I would wake up and go to class and be frustrated with teachers, thinking this material is not any way relevant to me, the homework is bad, or, and then I'd go to work and I'd shut down other people's ideas, and I'd, I'd criticize other things that I had done and other, uh, other work accomplishments, and I'd go home, and then I'd get down on myself for not cooking well enough, or not, not working out hard enough, and not spending enough time on homework, watching you know, too much time on Facebook, or whatever it is, and then finally I'd, I'd get to my bed, and and flop down. And I'd go over every single thing that had happened throughout the day and think to myself, tomorrow I'm going to be perfect. I'm going to correct that mistake that I did today. I'm not going to do that again. And tomorrow, that'll be the best day ever. And then I'd finally, after two, three hours of just horrible, excruciating rumination, I'd, I'd drift off to sleep to wake up and, and then go over this whole cycle for about two, three more days, or four. And then the weekend would come. And if you're a business student like me, the weekend was on Thursday, which I enjoyed. And what I loved about the weekend was it was my opportunity to sort of break away of this really mundane, purposeless life that I was living. I didn't really know why I was doing anything that I was doing. I just knew that you know, I was supposed to be here and you know, be involved in getting good grades and thinking about my career and all this stuff. But then the weekend would come and I could sort of break away from all that stuff. And so I, I would, I would de-stress like a lot of students on campus here. I'd, I'd consume controlled substances, drugs and alcohol. And what I loved is that when I started, there would be a perspective change. The way I viewed life would be a little bit different. And it was so intriguing to me that I, that I would push and push and push and get further and further and further and see how, how far I could really you know, change this perspective, this life. And it led me to some really destructive behaviors. Uh, I made a lot of bad choices. And then I'd wake up the next day and I'd, I'd look back and I'd get down on myself for doing dumb stuff and then I'd get down on myself for being down. And then and I'd have to go back to school, and then on, I was on this cycle of a few days, and, a few, and then uh, a, few, uh, a few days on, a few days off. And it was really tough just to walk around and sort of not understand anything about why I'm existing on campus, not feeling connected to really anything at all. And some days I just couldn't handle it. I mean, some days it would get to the point where I'd be walking across the Washington Avenue Bridge and I'd put my right hand on the railing and slow down. And then I'd just peer over the side. If I jumped off here, would I die? Walk a little further. If I jumped off here, would I die? In some days, if it was really bad, 
I'd whirl around and I'd grab the railing with both of my knuckles, with my, both my hands, white knuckled. My body would begin to shake and every single thought in my head would fire. Just jump, just swing your legs over, just end it. There's no reason for you to be here anyways. And all of a sudden, there would be this feeling that would creep up through my hands, forearms, biceps, shoulders, and chest, and it would sort of grab me right here. And it would be so intense that I would have to let go of the railing and continue walking. And I realized that I, that I, that I was actually alive. But I had to tempt death to feel like I was a human being which is a bad place to be. And so I'm in this state of mind, and I'm sitting at my kitchen table, my tiny West Bank apartment, looking at this apple. And I decide, you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of just doing all this stuff for no reason. I'm going to eat this apple core. And so I quick rack my brain through Miss Noreen's bio biology lectures and determine I will not be in extreme physical discomfort or near death again if I eat this thing. So I decide, all right, let's just do this. I turn the apple on its side, and I chomp down on the, on the bottom end. And you know, it's not a whole lot different. It's a little green fuzzy thing or whatever, you know. But. <laughs> and, and, and then I, I get to the core. And I'm looking at this core. And my mother used to cut out the hard parts of my apple slices. And here I am sort of raging, thinking about eating this apple. And I, I decide, all right, let's just do it. I bite down again. And suddenly, there's this explosion of flavors and textures that I never even knew existed. And I'm hooked. So I devour the rest of the apple, run to the fridge, and eat all the other ones, too. <laughs> and I'm, I'll never forget this. I was on the bus one day. I had just finished eating this apple, and I was feeling so good. I was like, oh, yeah, what a delicious snack. And then all of a sudden, this woman, she looks at me, and she goes, did you, did you just eat that whole apple? I said, yes, I did just eat that whole apple. <laughs> but I got that same sort of uplifting feeling. I was noticed. I felt good about being alive. And it was awesome. So I changed my entire apple consumption schedule around my social calendar. So I had it timed out perfectly. I would walk to Miss Joanne Syverson's 1245 business communication lecture, sit down in my chair <laughs> about five minutes late, which I apologize about to the rest of the class, garner a little bit of attention, you know, stretch out, <clears throat> cough, look over here. <clears throat> Have nothing left but the core. And I'd finish it. Be sitting there, there were some Snickers and Steers. Oh, did you see that? I said, oh, I just had that apple core. And I was, yeah, that was me. But over time, people stopped caring. And I had had other successes in my life that I, was noticed, that I was noticed for that I had sort of let go. But this, for, for some reason, I really cared about eating these apples and being recognized for it. And all of a sudden, people didn't care anymore. And that made me mad. So I went, underwent the most intense period of self-reflection that I ever have. And I was going to get to the bottom of this. What? is really going on here? Am I really carrying a bag of apples around with me and eating them in public places on campus <laughs> so people will talk to me? Am I really giving everybody else the freedom to tell me if something is good or not? I can't even feel good about just eating an apple. I need somebody to say, yeah, that's cool. Am I really that sad? that I can't even feel good about anything I do without external validation? And the answer is yes. So that was a big apple. And you see, what I found out is that my entire life, I have been put in this box with my peers and an administrator comes along, boss, teacher, and they say, OK, great. I'm going to come back in 10 seconds, 10 minutes, 10 hours, 10 days, 10 years. And we're going to rank you first to last. Now your job is to control these three or four variables. We've controlled everything else in the whole world, so you don't have to worry about anything except three or four variables. 
go. So we go, and then the administrator comes back, and, okay, people at the top, you did good. You're good. Stamp, label. People in the middle, you're average, label. People at the bottom, you're bad. You're not working hard enough, label. And so my whole life, I've been fortunate enough to be in settings where I've been able to excel at controlling these situations where there are two to three variables. But all of a sudden, in my life, there's an infinite amount of variables, and I have no idea what to do. I haven't been trained to do this, and it's causing me a lot of pain. And people are telling me, though, you're good. No, don't worry. You're good. It's all right. So what do I do? Well, I balance things by coming up with every single reason possible in my mind that I'm not good. So the apple really taught me that, you know, I was just going outside and looking for that administrator in my life and everything I did, that I couldn't even feel good about anything that I was doing because I didn't really understand how to find anything I cared about in life. Nothing had ever prepared me for all of this uncertainty that is life. And until I encountered this apple, and it made me really understand that I have the power to actually feel good about what I'm doing. I have the power to, to you know, be joyful. I don't have to have somebody come along and tell me, yes, you can feel joy now. That's a good thing. So the point is not to go out and eat a bunch of apple cores. I just want to say, you know, there are a lot of decisions that we have in our lives. And other people have done a lot before us. But at the end of the day, there are really only two options when you're looking at that apple core. You can either set it aside, or you can take a bite. It's your choice.